Hi guys, um, I thought I'd do like a, like a little vlog video thing just to sort of give you an update of what's going on. I'm going to try and do them each week I think. I'm not, it's not like you have to do anything to make a video if that makes sense, just film whatever's going on that week. But um, yeah, just sort of give you an idea of what's going on in the workshop at the minute. Um, sort of jobs that are coming up and bits and bobs like that, any little bits that have been changed. I'll uh, flip the camera around and I'll show you some of the things that have uh, or even new or uh, newish because I haven't put a video up for a while. Okay. So one of the things that has changed in the last couple of weeks is new block on the plane of thicknesser. Um, it's a spiral block. Really, really pleased with it. Massive improvement on the on the original on the original straight knife block. Loads less tear out. It's not a proper helical. It is just a spiral. So if you Look, the blades are radius, they've got a 95 mil radius, so they've got a slight curve to them. So I suppose that gives a very slight shear of a cut, but they are perpendicular um, to the to the table, you know, or parallel to the cutter shaft sort of thing. So they're not a, a true shear cut, but even still, massive improvement. Really happy with it. Um, probably would like to have got helical ideally, but this was the right price and, you know, fits my machine and whatever, so... Uh, that was something that was pretty good. I'll uh, flick up a couple of videos of it being fitted. It's probably, I guess you could probably fit it in about two and a half hours, something like that, if you had new bearings. Took me a bit longer because the uh, I had to reuse the bearings because I hadn't ordered any because I wasn't sure what size they were until I get them off, um, and so I had to get them off the old rusted shaft without damaging them, and that's where most of the time was spent really trying to make up little jigs and bits to to pull them off without damaging them. But in the end, it took me a day I suppose to do really, but it's all set up nice, cutting really well, um, yeah, really pleased. Couldn't recommend it enough really. If you're thinking of getting one, well worth it. Um, other sort of newish bits, uh, you've probably, I don't know if you've seen this or not, it's an old Wadkin pillar drill, um, company my brother works for, and they had it in their, in their workshop, but it hadn't been used for years, and it was all seized up and rusted, and I gave that a clean up, I want to get a variable frequency drive for it, because if I show you, it's only single speed at the minute, and it is, it is fast as hell, really, really quick, I don't know, I guess it's around sort of 16, 1800 RPM as a guess, but I don't know for certain. Made a bit of a temporary uh, fence for it for now. Um, so that's another new addition. I think the serial number says it's from 1944, maybe something like that, 1945. So sort of wartime ish model. It's actually come out of an RAF workshop, so I think it is a, an old military owned one. But that's a pretty cool, pretty cool machine, really. A bit different. Um, it's got the, it has got the handle missing, I need to order a bit of 5 8 inch rod for it, but it has got the foot treadle operated head, which is actually pretty handy, because I use it a bit for like, um, like drilling cup hinges and stuff like that out, so it's nice to be able to use two hands to hold the door or whatever it is that you're drilling, and then you leave both hands free, because you can, you know, sort of plunge with your foot, um, you just got to make sure you set the depth stop, because it's quite difficult to gauge how deep you're going with doing it with a press with your foot, especially because it's it's kind of sprung loaded. So um, you can push your foot all the way down. It's not a direct relationship between how far you push your foot and how far the head travels. It allows for a bit of, there's like a compression spring that takes some of the pressure. So you gotta be a little bit careful with that. But um, yeah, pleased with that, that's pretty cool. Um, what else got going on? Uh, four side that you've sort of seen in some other some other videos but I'm going to do a bit of work on this because it's a nice machine it's just a bit time consuming to set up at the minute so I'm going to attach digital readouts to the heads I think and I've also got some quotes from a engineering company in China to make me some uh, spiral blocks for that as well and I think with spiral heads and digital readouts it would be a really a really nice machine and obviously you know cost of a decent four side and new is is quite considerable so that would be a nice you know sort of like a nice machine for a moderate cost by the time you've bought the spiral heads and 
bit of engineering work to get the digital readouts fitted so um, that's there in terms of what's being done at the minute I've just a couple of weeks back I've finished some wardrobes Run some more wardrobes at the minute. These are mirrored ones. These all need sanding down, ready for spraying. They've just been primed. So if I can, so these have got mirrors in, and the way they're done is with like a double, a double rebate in them, um, and then the mirror drops into the first rebate, and then a back panel pushes in over the top of that and covers the back of the mirror up. But uh, I've got those doors left to spray. It's been a bit of hard work spraying this last week because uh, they've been harvesting across them we get these little tiny I don't, everyone calls them thunder bugs i don't know what the proper name from is or they're like thunder flies they're like tiny little black beetles that live in the crops as soon as they harvest they all come up flying up and you end up with thousands of them everywhere um but they do get in your spray finish a bit so that's made a bit of hard work of that um but most of the job a lot of it's near so we've got some of the bedsides we've got the end panels in the other room for them still there's one of the wardrobes, there's a couple more of the wardrobes, shelves are stacked up, there's a couple more units over there, uh, a couple of units there as well, uh, we've got, that's egg faced MDF for the next couple of jobs, um, and there's a load of 25mm hydrofugo for the next couple of jobs there as well, um, got Martha, his little sailing boat, that's a bit of a project to, to do up. I'm not going to get any time on it this year, I don't think, but uh, it's here. So the, the plan was, at least if I had it here outside the workshop, if I did get a bit of time, I could spend a bit of time doing a bit to it. But I want to do out the inside of it like an old... It's a 19... I think it's 1970 or 1969, so it's getting on a bit. But it is a fiberglass hole, but I'd like to trim it all out, kind of traditional inside, and do it all in wood. So... Uh, and then... What's going on? In here, it's got a spray boot. Let's say, let's turn some lights on. Um, there's some M panels and bits left kicking over there, and dry racks, some under cover panels. Um, I normally put panels up underneath, actually, these ones are, are grooved and then they're drilled at the end um, because they have some of the Halfly, 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 however you want to say it. Uh, Luke's LED strip things in. Um, that's the. These are just. These are just M panels here. Um, they're all in Farrow and Ball Pavilion Grey, but it's a. It's colour matched to a pigmented lacquer. Um, so that's the bits and bobs that are. In here. It's a bit of an odd job for me, really, because it's not my usual type of. Work. It's actually for another another joiner who's been ill unfortunately he's been in hospital he's a bit of a mate and uh and so i've taken on a doing a couple of his jobs for him to get him take some of the pressure off of him um, but like these are obviously these are lay on which isn't normally my thing at all like i'd normally you know everything i do is generally in frame so a bit of edge banding and that which isn't my normal I'm not really set up for edge banding so i try and avoid it as much as possible um but yeah, that's that. And then let's have a quick think what else we got kicking about. Anything interesting? If anyone's got any questions, I can always ask them anyway. Um, in here we have, so this here is Oak and Akoya for the next kitchen. I'll stick a couple of pictures up now of, uh, of that next kitchen. that's coming up it's painted in frame my usual sort of thing beaded um so that'll be a fairly hopefully fingers crossed fairly quick one i'm about three or four weeks behind on jobs at the minute partly because i've had issues with getting mdf and stuff which hasn't helped but um yeah just a few jobs gone gone over a bit and it has that knock-on effect so i'm hoping i'll be able to make up a bit of ground with that painted one because uh, it's a bit more my usual sort of work and then uh after that, I've got another uh, 
fairly big solid oak kitchen and uh, I'll show you some I think I think there's some video I never showed me making it as such but I think there's some videos on the channel where that that kitchen's being made in the background I'll pop a couple of pictures up here just to sort of show people what that looked like when it was finished I never got any photos at the time because I was waiting for the stone to go on it was about six and a half hours away so it wasn't one that I was going to nip back to get photos of but the uh, client was really nice and they sent me some pictures um, so I'll stick a couple of pictures up of that one but I've got got another kitchen so another kitchen sort of similar to that one um, which is this one now and uh, yeah so that one's that one's got to be quite time consuming they always take a bit longer than you expect these kind of solid jobs one just because you spend a lot of time processing timber you know I mean with a sheet the neared sheet you cut it up and you've already got something flat um, but that's a big part of the reason why I invested in the new spiral head on the planer because with having a you know complete solid kitchen having something where you don't get so much tear out and you know you're not got to keep changing blades check that last kitchen I changed probably three sets of blades making it because it was all American white oak it's quite hard on them um, and if you don't if you let them get a little bit dull then you're doing that thing where you sort of spend a lot of time sanding because you're getting that bit of tear out and everything has to go through the through the sander more it, it just makes more work in the long run so I'm hoping that's got to stop with that um, but yeah that's the easily that bedroom I'm hoping to get that finished in the next couple of days and then just leave that in that other room next door that still needs knocking through, still haven't got through, through it around to that. Really could do it doing it before the winter because it's not so bad at the minute you can walk out and go around, but when it starts getting real wet, you're not going to want to do it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully get all that bedroom in there and then while that's in there, I can just crack on a bit with this with this kitchen. I've done a few little odds and sods for it. I'll start machining up some rail stock and style stock and bits and bobs but I haven't really started it in earnest so it'd be nice to really really get on with that but yeah that's where we're up to uh, so if anyone's got any questions or anything or if you think this kind of video is stupid and boring and you'd rather me not bother doing it um, then say because I thought you know it just some people are just interested in what you're doing aren't they um, yeah anyway have a nice weekend cheers